In this video, we have a special guest. His name is Aaron. He's currently a staff software engineer at Google, ex software engineer at Amazon and Microsoft. In this video, we're basically going to talk about what does staff software engineer do and how's it different compared to other software engineer levels and what are some pros and cons for being a staff software engineer. Okay, so welcome, Aaron. Thank you very much for being on this show. Pleasure to be here. Awesome. So, Aaron, uh, can you tell us a bit more about yourself? Yeah, uh, my name's Aaron Rehek. I'm a staff software engineer. I'm currently employed by uh, Google and working out of Vancouver, Canada. Um, although today uh, I won't be talking about anything um, specific about Google. Um, I'm going to be talking a little bit about uh, what it's like to be a staff engineer and um, uh, kind of my path to it and, and things people might be interested if they're on a similar path. Gosh, first question that we have for you is like, what do you do as a staff software engineer? Um, so in, in a funny way, this is one of the hardest questions to answer because it's a little bit different for each person, um, what they do. There's some kind of general patterns um, that you see as a staff engineer. Obviously, you're an individual contributor. So I um, write code. I make design documents. Um, I collaborate with engineers, um, but there's a couple different types of roles that you typically see. You, you see some people who are kind of um, more what we call like technical leads. Um, often there are people that are running large projects. Uh, by large, it's anything from uh, a project that involves like uh, a few teams, so maybe 40, 50 people, um, upwards to, you know, as, as you go up in the levels, hundreds, thousands. Uh, of uh, engineers involved to, to deliver something. Um, that's a pretty typical pattern. Um, but you also see staff engineers that are um, more focused kind of on depth. Uh, they may be going and um, solving the uh, hardest problems that a particular organization has. Um, so really kind of focused on like, this is a critical area. How do I, you know, either individually or with a group go and fix it? Uh, and then you may find some staff engineers who kind of act as, um, for lack of a better uh, term, a, a partner to um, managers and executives throughout companies. So an example of this might be somebody who works for, like, say, an office of the CTO, and their job is basically to be a technical advisor and to kind of extend the abilities of, um, of the CTO by kind of, like, helping to shape and influence the policy and lead um, specific things. Uh, as kind of, um, if you imagine like a president and a, a chief of staff is always the analogy, um, the you know staff engineer is kind of doing that role where they're saying, here's how I implement the, the ideas of, of that executive. So depending on what organization you're in, kind of what level, um, those are the kinds of things you might expect to do. Gotcha, so it could be, it can be different, uh, depends on the organization, right? Yeah, every, every company is a little bit different. Every um, team is a little bit different. Um, I've played some of each of those roles at, at various times. Gotcha, gotcha. So, but what, what about you? Like, specifically, what do you do as a staff, software engineer at your current company? Um, well, I've, I've actually only been at uh, Google for a few weeks, so I'm not sure which path um, I'm going to particularly take. Um, I, I expect probably for the first little bit, I'll be more of a, a technical leader. Um, since I'm new to the company. Um, gotcha. Uh, gotcha. But I certainly, you know, could find myself on any one of those kind of um, what we call archetypes of, of staff engineers. So can you also talk about the responsibilities um, as a software, staff software engineer? Yeah. So um, I think the big difference between, say, a senior and a staff engineer is in terms of, like, it's, it's not just a progression. It's not just more of what you were doing before. It's it's actually a different role. And so kind of the staff role involves making an organization um, more productive, uh, being what uh, we call a, a force multiplier. So what that means is like you basically have to have impact over a large organization. You need to kind of help shape where it's going. And that might be um, take place in different ways. I mean, there's lots of ways to be impactful, right? Um, some of that may be mentoring. Uh, I'm, in the past, I've done a lot of mentoring of senior engineers, 
of uh, managers even. Um, it may be, you know, being the person who's kind of there as a consultant for a really complicated system as a design review. Um, it may be helping to figure out um, operational strategies or address um, significant outages and, and uh, things like that. Um, it could be, you know, taking on a major project that's important and kind of um, helping to figure out like, well, uh, you know, one problem you see in a lot of organizations is that like managers will have kind of silos, they'll have a scope of responsibility and they'll have an engineering team that's executing on that and you need to deliver something across them and those teams, you know, might have different goals and somebody needs to go help build a consensus of what you're going to build and, and how you're going to resolve it. So it, it, your impact could vary on, on um, you know, depending on what your organization needs. But in general, the big difference is that kind of acting beyond the scope of one particular team, um, acting on behalf of an entire organization um, to all the way up to a, a whole company. Gotcha, gotcha. So basically, more more responsibilities. Yeah, more scope, more influence. Um, you know, the, the analogy you could do is something like the difference between um, you know a, a, an engineering manager who's kind of a line manager and then a director, right? Mm -hmm. um, a, a director's job is a lot more to set the culture to make sure people understand the context that they're working on the right things figuring out the strategy, making sure all those groups are working together, making sure that they have the right people to be able to execute. Uh, it's like that, except for much more focused on the technical aspects of it. Right? True. So I'm, I'm not necessarily, you know, managing the budget or, um, you know, doing um, performance analysis, um, like, you know, here's what you need to do to get to the next level for individual people, um, that kind of level of coaching. But I may be doing, you know, one-on-ones with uh, senior engineers, kind of talking to them about, like, well, here's how your piece fits into an overall architecture. Um, here are the problems we're having, resolving conflicts between, like, well, there's different technical strategies and two different groups have different ideas of who should take something on and kind of mediating those, um, things like that. How, how is staff software engineer compared to, you know, other levels? Yeah, there, there's, there's overlap. I mean, um, you know, I certainly mentor people on their career growth and things like that. But when I'm doing it, I'm, I'm you know, I'm definitely spending more time thinking about uh, the technology, how we build out a project, do we have the right people to do it, things like that, and less about like things like, um, you know, uh, are we within our budgets? Do we have the right space allocated physically in the building? You know, things like that. Um, the the comparison in terms of levels, I mean, for most companies, um, you'll see that they have this kind of progression where you have um, parallel paths, right? Um, as an individual contributor, you kind of have like an entry level position. Um, you usually have kind of a, a core individual contributor and then you have a senior engineer who's, you know, that plus more and maybe taking on some team leadership. After that, you start getting into this kind of more organizational impact and it really becomes a different role. So the difference becomes like, what do you want to specialize in? Do you want to spend most of your time on, on the people management and the recruiting and things like that? Do you want to spend more time on the technical? Do you want to spend more time on the project management? And there's, for most at least big like fan companies, there are independent paths for that. Just a side question, like how did you figure out which path did you want to branch off to? Uh, yeah, it's a good question. Um, I think when you talk to people at kind of this level, what you'll find is um, a lot of them kind of played around in the different areas. Um, some people will do uh, being a manager for a little bit and then coming back. Um, in my case, uh, I didn't really do that. Um, I kind of always stayed on the tech path, but when I was you know early in my career as a co-op student and things like that, um, I did go and, and do some work actually in project management and things. And I found, I found just, I liked the focus of the technology. I, I miss my IDE if I'm not in it every once in a while. Um, I like solving the problems. And so for me, it was a question of, you know, I've, I've been offered to be a, a manager at, at companies dozens of times, right? Anytime they, they have a shortage, one of the things that will happen, uh, like very typically, is a senior engineer will be asked, "Hey, do you want to just 
you know, start managing the team. Uh, and a lot of people choose to do that. Uh, but for me, it was a question of like, well, what am I good at and what do I enjoy and where will I be world class? And the way I kind of looked at it was that, you know, if I went and became a manager, um, I could probably do it okay. Um, but I'm not sure I would do it better than other people who were really passionate and love it. Versus what I found was on the tech side, as I grew my capabilities, um, I just kept getting better and better. And I was getting to a point where I could do some things that other people couldn't. And so I just kind of kept growing in that way. And, and for me, it was just kind of a, a choice that way. It was a, you know, I would rather go play my role on, on the tech ladder and do it exceptionally well than kind of be average on, on the other side. But I certainly know lots of other people who have, who have went the other way and found that, you know, um, what they really liked as they became senior was um, focusing on, you know, the one-on-ones with um, people and things like that. And they wanted to spend more time doing that. And um, they enjoyed, you know, more of the management aspects. They, they liked the entrepreneurial side. In some cases, they went into startups. And so they went a different path. And I think it's a question that, you know, at a certain level, Everybody has to make a personal choice. There's no right or wrong answer. Gotcha. Okay. So my next question is, you know, what are some of the benefits for being a software engineer for people who are maybe considering, um, you know, this path, what are some of the benefits? Well, um, I think, I think the benefit is, um, much the same as being a software engineer in general. I mean, obviously it's, it's you know, a lucrative career, but the same is going to be true if you go uh, management in the big tech places as well. I think uh, what I like is the problem solving aspect. I mean, that was always a thing I liked with software engineering. I liked being able to think about a problem deeply and learn about it and play around with it and explore the different solutions and um, be able to go back and build something. And to me, um, a staff engineer, it, it's just at a certain point, your ability to do that by yourself, writing all the code yourself, um, you're just limited. There's just not enough resources to solve certain kinds of problems. So the benefit to me, you know, as you go up that ladder is you get to take on larger problems and you get to challenge yourself. And um, that's rewarding in its own right. And, and the impact. I mean, it's fun to be able to go and work on something large, right? Um, you know, you can, you can go and pioneer a new space. Uh, that that's an interest, interesting thing to do as an engineer, to be the first person on a project and then to be able to lead it and to see it grow from like something that was kind of an idea you maybe put down in a, in a document somewhere to becoming this thing that, you know, um, I've, I've had some um, technologies I've helped kind of develop that, you know, I was the first person on that now have 50, 60 engineers working on them. And I, I have some friends that are, uh, you know, staff or principal engineers who have done that at even larger scales. That's a neat thing to be able to do, right? It's a neat opportunity. Uh, I think fundamentally, if you don't have a passion for doing that, um, it would be hard to work at this kind of level. And also, what are the challenges, right, for being a staff engineer? I think the challenge, uh, for me at least, was that it's a very different role. Um, you know, as I said, uh, you know, getting a promotion from kind of like a, an entry level engineering job to kind of the next level up, um, the, the terms vary at different companies, but you know, the, the, the first two levels, it's pretty much a, you become more competent, right? You get enough practice, you get enough experience that you're able to be independent. And as you move to senior engineer, there's a mental shift where you start having to take responsibility for a team and kind of look broader and have a longer term horizon and things like that. But when you get to staff engineer uh, or principal engineer, um, a really weird thing happens. Uh, you know, most companies are really good, really, really good at having uh, mentoring and everything up to senior engineer, um, but to staff, uh, not so much. At that point, you're expected to be kind of part of an organization's leadership team. The safety net that you had along the way of people, you know, telling you what to work on or what the priorities are, you're suddenly one of the people who's supposed to figure that out. Um, and so it can be difficult to know 
what are the right things to prioritize? What are the right things to work on? Um, politics, uh, internal politics can become a bigger part. You're, you're trying to build consensus across multiple teams that all have their own goals. Um, you have to figure out a way to do that. You may not have direct influence over it. Um, you have to build relationships with people and, and um, be in a position where you, know, you can partner with them. Um, you're maybe not the biggest expert on parts of the code, so now you have to be able to um, really kind of check your ego and learn about it uh, and have kind of a beginner's mindset. And, you know, people will come to you asking you for opinions on things and you have to know what guidance should you give versus not. All of that uh, is, is a real different job um, than what I think most people would consider, you know, software engineering when they first get into the industry. Personally, I, I find it really rewarding. But there are there are a lot of places where you know if you're not careful, um, you know you you can get really lost in the weeds. You can end up working on something that doesn't matter, and then the next time you're in a you know performance cycle, people will be saying you know you didn't have the impact we expected. Um, you could really easily um, you know play the politics wrong and end up in a case where um, you know uh, you're you're unable to be effective. Um, so those are all difficult things. I think a lot of people think that like the higher up you go, uh, the more um, the more you can choose what you want to do. Um, and that's true to a point. But the funny thing is, like the higher up you go, because you have to have this impact, uh, often what you end up doing is saying, you know, this is the interesting part of the project, but I need to hand it off to somebody to grow them. Uh, and And that's an interesting shift. Now, in this video, we talked about what does a staff software engineer do. In the next video, we're going to carry on the conversation and talk about how to become a staff software engineer. Now, if you're interested in this kind of content, please consider like and subscribe. And also, if you have any suggestions on what to interview next, please also comment down below.